What's up everybody? This is Matt Brown with another IoT hacking video. Today we have a little bit of a bigger target that we're going to look at on the workbench over here. This is a Dell PowerEdge 1950. It's a little bit older of a server, but I have had this over on my shelf for a while. This has served me well over the years. And this is actually where I cut my teeth, kind of in the tech industry. So I used to work as a server admin running Linux servers uh, while I was, uh, you know, as a side gig while I was in college. And so I would configure servers, rack them up, and install Linux on them and, you know, manage those systems just like this one. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at a component that is specifically one that I've used before, it, which is the Dell Remote Access Card. So this is called a DRAC, uh, Dell Remote Access Card. And it's got a flash chip that we're gonna do some firmware extraction on. So let's head over to the workbench and let me take a look at this thing. All right. So as you can see, uh, the server doesn't even completely fit in my camera frame. So we're just gonna be looking at the important bits today. And like I said, we've already taken out the thing that I'm really wanting to target, which is this card. So the purpose of this card, like I said, is remote access. So if you can not access your server and maybe you're miles or, you know, half a country away from the server that you're supposed to manage, this card can really save the bacon because it can power cycle the server if you can interact with this network interface, which is very nice to have. And so I have already removed that. It was down here in this little slot right here. This can go into a normal kind of PC, uh, PCI riser up here, uh, but this one was actually connected via these little ribbon cables and kind of sits down here in this specialized slot. But we are going to get rid of this. I might actually, do another video on some of the interfaces. There's tons of pinouts on this board for things like JTAG and UART and stuff like that. So that would be a really fun experience. But for now, that's another Nick. We're gonna shove this out of the way and we are going to focus, like I said, on this remote access card. So let's look under the microscope and I wanna show you the flash chip that we're gonna be targeting today. So right there, we see a TSOP56 flash chip. And if I uh, tilt it the right way, you can see the ID number on there. Now, in this video, we're going to be doing a very live on the fly firmware extraction. I have not extracted the firmware on this device yet. The one piece of cheating that I have done is I've gone ahead and I've confirmed that my chip reader and the software is able to read this exact chip. So I don't need to type in this ID. I have it right here. And I've already searched in the software and found the correct reading profile here that is going to be supported. So we know we're good to go. This is always a good thing to do before you pull a flash chip off of a board. And so let's go ahead and let's get started doing that. So the first thing we're gonna do is, let's zoom in here. We're just gonna do this without the microscope today because sometimes that is easier. So I have my hot air rework gun here and we are gonna just start going to town on this chip. And I'm gonna spread the heat around on the PCB, just kind of preheat things a little bit and Sometimes I will pull a chip off without any flux, but with a chip like this, I find it very helpful if we have a little bit of flux. So I'm going to add that in just a second. Now we're gonna start targeting the heat directly where we want it to go. And we've got some flux on either side. So this chip, unlike some other ones that we read, it's, it's a little trickier because obviously you have the legs on opposite sides. And so you can, there's a couple different strategies. I like to just heat the entire chip so I can pull it off in one kind of pull. But what you can do is if you're, if you're you know, not interested in waiting that long is you can, all right, we are burning something underneath 
Uh, the PCB. Well, that's interesting. All right, let's hope that doesn't cause us any problems. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to lock the focus down there so that the chip stays in focus. There we go. But yeah, one potential strategy here is to just do one side and lift. Ooh, that's what we're going to do. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to lift the other side. Ah, okay, that, that was the winning strat for today. All right, I might have to consider trying that. Oh, and of course, I'm like, why does it smell so funny in here? I did not have my, my air extraction on. So that's going to smell great in the lab. Yeah, I might have might, might, might burnt something there, but, you know, hopefully our chip's all right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our chip prepped and ready to go. All right. So first what we need to do is we need to get that flux off there. So we have some isopropyl alcohol here and we are going to try to clean this off. This is why I don't like using flux on these chips because you're inevitably going to have a hard time with these legs. I do like these. These are not Q-tips. These are like foam. These are special uh, tips. And so the little Q-tip hairs don't get stuck in the legs. So the, these are these are way better for a task like this, but still not fun. All right, let me get one more of those clean. That was not bad. All right. Now, what I am going to do next is, so that hopefully will get most of the flux off of there. And then my next step is to be, is we're going to look at this under the microscope and see if there are any solder bridges. All right. So let's first look over here. Oh, I forgot my... You know what? That's going to be about as good as we get. I've been playing with the zoom and focus on my microscope, and uh, I'm not quite happy with it yet. All right, so we have no solder bridges between those. Those are great. What about this other set? Ooh, so right there, there's like a solder ball. Like, can I? Now I'm like all the way down. All right, we're going to lower the microscope. There we go. <laughs> we're cooking. All right, there we go. Now I might have like a little bit more room to zoom down. No? Okay. So right there you can see that I do have a bit of solder. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some braid here. We're just going to grab that right off. And now we're all clear. And I don't think I see any more solder bridges on that side. And on this side, we look good as well. So we look good. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna come back over here and we're going to load up the reader. So this is the XGECU. Uh, as you can see here, this is the, does it say here somewhere? Yeah, T76. So. For this chip, this is a TSOP 56. So you cannot read this with the OG XGECU 48. You're gonna need either the T56 or the T76. So just fun fact. All right, now we're going to line this up. There. And we're gonna do the spring load thing. And we're gonna check that. And let's just let's just try to verify in the microscope. Again, we're gonna really be testing my focus here. I've been I've been playing with all of the focus. There we go. All right, that. There we go. There we go. That looks solid. All right. No bridges. Looks like we're all connected correctly. And so now all I need to do is a little bit off camera. We're going to make sure the power button is clicked on, and then we're going to
connect this up to USB. Again, a little bit off camera there. And let's see, let's hope that we're gonna get a good read out of this thing. So, all right, it says programmer connected, so it's identified that it is hooked up there. And we're just gonna do, just gonna go for a read. There we go. Okay, this is good. This is good news. All right. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my space prepped where we're going to transfer the firmware to. So, all right, it's verified. Okay, so it did read, it read it okay, and then it's gonna do a verification step. That is all good. Now I just need to come over here. And we're going to, oh yeah, yeah, can't do that yet. Okay, go back. Nice, okay, so look at this. So we got, all right, yeah, there's definitely some firmware there. Nice, let's go save. And we're gonna save the flash, the default to here, and let's call it Drac. 1.bin, save that file, and it's been saved here. And we're just gonna shoot this over to my Linux machine in that working directory that we have. And yeah, it's gonna need to go way faster than that. What is even happening? <laughs> there we go. There you go. All right. All right. We got a file now. We can run binwalk. Oh, okay, 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 okay. This is good. This is good. So we are actually seeing file systems. Awesome. All right. I'm going to turn my air extraction off because that is just loud and annoying. So we have a bunch of JFFS2 file systems. So that's awesome. So that's a, that's a writable file system. We've got a CRAMFS. We have probably the Linux kernel there. And you know, just some, just some copyright strings. So we're just gonna try to go, uh, go for broke here and do the dash E flag to see if it, and extract. Okay, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good uh, probability there. <laughs> pretty good success rate. So it wasn't able to get the cram fs for whatever reason, but a bunch of jffs2 file systems were extracted. So again, new version of binwalk. It's going to drop it by default into this extractions dir. And here's a bunch of stuff. So let's just look at all the file names. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Very cool. All right. There's, there's, a, there's a key dot bin. That's fun. Oh, cool. All right. Here's an in this other partition. It looks like we have all of the, like the SSH, like SSH host key, RSA key, things like that. That's fun. All right. Of a firmware update script, the login greeting. All right, here I'm just gonna like make another terminal down here that we can look at some of this stuff with. All right, fun. That's the little login that you get. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Patchy. This is fun. I did not know what to expect, to be to be honest, with all this stuff. Okay, these are some like uh, dracscript.config. Okay. That's fun. needs this password. That's fun. 
This is like an HTTPD config file. Obviously, that's like a commented out field. That's not like a real password, I don't think. All right, that's cool. I wonder what, is there anything else interesting? And it's just a directory. It's probably also just a directory. Hmm. It's like key file. No. Is it wait? Oh. It's just empty. Fun. Very interesting. Like I'm like, is there like a database or something? To my knowledge, I've never used this track card on, on this specific system. So it could be that it's in like a semi unconfigured state. But that's pretty cool. All right. Yeah. Oh, hey, there's a firmware update script. That's, that's fun. <laughs> all right, all right. That's interesting. What's this? This looks like this is just like a bunch of interesting stuff. Let's go into go into this partition. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. There's a log directory. Nothing. LDAP config? No, nothing. Um, RAC user? Nothing. Chair? <laughs> all right, all right, nothing, nothing, nothing crazy there. Yeah, I mean, there's clearly like, uh, you know, like a web server or something like that, like this Apache thing. Oops. SRM conf server configuration file. Okay, same thing. All right. Well, uh, not not a bunch of like <laughs> interesting stuff there. I guess one more thing we can check is like if there's anything in OTP. I kind of doubt there's going to be anything in OTP, but ah, and it's empty. I've seen a couple devices lately that have started storing keys in OTP. So this is something to not sleep on when you're doing firmware extraction. Well, uh, thanks for watching this video. Obviously, uh, maybe it didn't go uh, in the direction we thought it would. Nothing nothing real juicy in the firmware, but still this is fun. This is kind of nostalgic for me uh, doing server stuff. Again, like I said, I think what we're gonna do with the server is there's tons of like, you know, debug headers and stuff like that on this hardware. So we will definitely mess around with this in some videos to come. Thank you for watching. And as always, have a great day.